Blackfish Gallery, February 2022 exhibition. I'm Kristen Solomon. I'm the director here at Blackfish and I am really excited. Uh, we have the honor of introducing you to uh, Paul Missel and Bob DeZono, who you are sure if you've been following Blackfish for a while are no stranger to. They are two of our oldest members. Uh, they're legendary around here and we are really excited to uh, share with you tonight their show which is called An Enduring Friendship um, which celebrates um, their long friendship and just their uh, their body of work. So tonight uh, we've got Paul Missile and Robert DeZono are going to give their talks and uh, you can catch this virtual um, if you missed it you can watch it again later if it, you're just seeing scrolling in your feed come back to it, you'll be able to do the playback. Um, and you can also come down and visit us in person. So we are here. Um, this show is open until uh, Saturday the 26th. And we are here on Tuesday through Saturday um, from 11 to 4 our current hours. So you can come down and check it out. Or you can see all the works right away at blackfish.com. So uh, without further ado, Paul Missile. Hi folks, and uh, thanks for coming to the show this way. I'd like to introduce another friend that, that uh, I brought along that I thought you might appreciate seeing. This is a friend of mine that's been with me for many, many years and has accompanied me in uh, many paintings. So if you come down, you get a chance to uh, see, see the little guy in action, if you can see across there. And he appears in, in many, many of my drawings and paintings. So I want to introduce him to it. He doesn't have, he's waiting for a name yet, I don't know. But anyway, uh, thanks for coming. Let me uh, Maybe we should have people type in the chat suggestions for a name. Oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> suggestions for a name for him. Mm, great idea. So uh, I started the show here. Um, it's a bit of a, uh, uh, what you call a retrospective. Uh, some things old, some things new. And um, the... Uh, piece here, so looking at here, these two were drawings that I used, uh, the second one was used in a uh, poster that uh, we used to produce at Blackfish, we used to do this all the time for each show, and uh, the drawing shows me in action with uh, pencil or pen in hand, as does the other, and the other uh, shows, uh, shows me with Rembrandt when he was in town, I asked him to sit with me as we did a portrait together, and he kindly obliged to, so we have this document. And uh, this piece here, uh, this is Bill. And Bill was a, a dear friend of mine, uh, actually a neighbor, lived, uh, lived in Cleveland. I always uh, admired his hair. I was like, oh, look at that. They're like chains somehow. And uh, yet he has this wonderful expression on his face that can just look right through you, just right through you and past you. Uh, no matter where you stand in the room, there's Bill looking at you. And uh, the other reason I'll, that I like this painting is what it does with color. It was a really good lesson. All my work is in, all my paintings are in um, uh, acrylics. And this one is one that I use uh, the concept of working from warms to cools to turn the form. So you can see on the one side the, uh, uh, the uh, dominance of the warm palette. And on the other side the cool, the purples on the cheek that you see along the edge that move into this rich blue that actually cause a kind of blur and is so intense a blue that it tends to soften that whole background and give it a sense of space and depth. Anyway, I keep, I keep Bill around because he uh, has a painting because it's a good teaching tool and it really is a good one to show students of what's possible to do with acrylics and how to turn form with acrylics and uh, with acrylics and with the concepts of warm to cool. This painting here um, is one I did for my dad when my dad was sick uh, for a while. I, I thought I'll give him something to, to ponder over like he needed. Uh, but uh, 
he really loved the painting. And um, the painting actually shows our environs. You know, we, we live, we had dogwood trees at our yard. And uh, the wine and the fruit, these things were sort of uh, uh, foods of the earth. And the crow, here's the first time I've used the crow, is really an instance of calling. The crow calling in the, the, the light, the life and the light. And you can see in the background of the painting, the transition of warm to cool again. This going from the morning light through to the uh, quiet of the evening. The crow or the bird calling in the light of the evening. Sounds like an anachronism, but, but basically it is that. It is kind of the light of the evening. And um, if we go down here, show you a couple others that are just kind of random, just showing different drawing techniques that I use. This is a friend of mine, Manny, his name is. And uh, he'd come over to the house and we'd sit and have coffee and talk about whatever was going on in his life and my life. But he was a dear friend of mine. And um, uh, I wanted to show you just there in the environment, just sitting there with coffee and having a conversation with my friend. And above that is, uh, here's the crow again, only in this case it's not the crow, this is a, a raven. And this is the raven actually uh, from the um, uh, uh, Audubon Society, and I've just used this raven through drawings and photographs and uh, kind of peopled the raven around this uh, uh, young woman as she wonders and thinks about things. I've titled it Whispering, and I kind of thinking, think of it as these, these wonderful birds just nattering around, and she's thinking of things, and they're just going ch -ch 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 and chattering all over the place. It's just a wonderful kind of uh, uh, communicating and communicating to the ethers. This one here is the bird again. And this here was a, uh, just a demonstration drawing that I did uh, for my students at Manuka, just showing the integration of some favorite things of mine, the cat, the bird, the shell, and then putting them into a flow of color, you know, a flow of light that moves down the piece to kind of hold it together in a kind of color axle, if you will. And then you, know, you can see the whole thing, it's like a waterfall of color. And that was, that was the lesson. And I used both um, acrylic and uh, a little bit of uh, pen and ink and pencil and collage. Then here is a, one, of, um, one of the paintings that I really have a, a real fondness for. It's a trilogy that you see here. And down here in the lower, uh, right hand side you can see the other two paintings that uh, uh, that are fill the fulfill the trilogy and what the story is about is a, is the movement of a couple from a sense of what you might call paradise but not being really satisfied with that that uh, a couple that is in search of their own spiritual paradise leaving that concept of of uh, um, at least what my, my sense when I was a kid, what I was told paradise was. Uh, you know, in this case, I wanted the couple to kind of proceed on their own through it. And you'll see the stages of that in, uh, in these reproductions of the other two paintings that, pro that uh, uh, accommodate this, the sense of, of, uh, of, the, of the trilogy. The blue tiger, which is their spiritual, uh, their spiritual union in movement. The couple leaving paradise accompanied by the tiger, and you can see a bit of the paradise in the background, the trees and all of, all of that. And then the final painting, which is the couple has a family in their apartment somewhere, and the cat, or the tiger now is a cat on the back of the couch, um, and uh, sort of a gray striped uh, uh, figure. And uh, he's, he's stalking a little bird outside the window. Mm -hmm. But the couple finding their paradise with themselves in their apartment, their fulfillment in that kind of union. So it's a, it's a transition like that. And the, the triptych, I think, tells that story. These guys now are a little more contemporary. Uh, that is, uh, contemporary to me. These are more recent. Uh, they're, and they're plays with form. Um, you can see in here, it's like the, the repetition of forms in a way the colors repeating themselves inside this volume and this volume and the orange and the, and the brown and the orange and the <coughs> gray. And even in here, the round and this are a little bit like this. And so it's that kind of play with huh. color and light. <coughs> you look a little carefully, you see a diamond 
in the eye of the robin. There's a diamond here in the, uh, in the spoon. There's a beautiful citroen in here, but uh, the light has to be just right for you for it to glow. But it's really fun with just playing with gems and embedding them in the painting. The one below is uh, uh, kind of a, my homage to, a playful homage to Morandi. It's things that are on shelves that are a little bit a kidder. They're a little bit off. So for example, and this is how my place often is, the lid isn't quite on. The cork of the bottle is a little bit off. There's another, another insert in this that's tipped. Uh, so it, get, it kind of echoes what's happening over here. The symmetry of the cups aren't quite right. So I, I love the, 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 it gives it a kind of animation, a kind of puttering around with forms and with light and with value that make the piece, I think, playful. And uh, this one's a little more serious, however. This one, uh, this one's called Speak Peace, January 6th. It shows a, a bird kind of pulling out a poster or, or, or uh, some kind of a, uh, a, a paper form. This says um, Speak Peace Now. And so he's, the bird is kind of pulling that out of that rumpled bag. And then the, the, uh, this is the symbology of the, of the flame and any fire and destruction with the matches. And this is a playful little collage about uh, birds, kind of like you can see the birds here, but then it takes a little while to see the other birds. They're all hidden in the rendering. And so that's a very kind of a playful, playful little bird in landscape form. This is a painting that uh, is, is unfinished right now. It's a work in progress. So I'll be working on this in, in weekends and then bringing it back in. And you can see it here at about the halfway point. But basically in this one too, I'm also really interested in in the, the repetition of the birds. The bird where it even in a very subtle way holds a cherry, but it's just the illustration of course on the pot. And then here the other bird is holding a salmon in its claw. And then there's, uh, and then there's a kind of warm against cool compliment thing with uh, this sort of uh, carnation type of thing in lemon. So there's lots of rhythms and counter rhythms. And I call it the white still life because it's a play with uh, more of a neutral with light grays and grayed down forms. So it'll be fun. Stay tuned and it'll <laughs> change every week. <laughs> this, uh, this, this is one of my favorite drawings. This is called Unfolding and it shows the raven bringing in an old leaf and the woman inside the leaf is peeling back the, uh, the, the, the dried leaf and stepping into the new leaf that's going to carry her down through the next chapter in her life. Uh, so that's it. So there, there again, the, the, this bird is kind of a protector and a bringer of, 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 uh, bringer of, of a kind of life, of life, as it unfolds and goes into its next journey. Then this one here, uh, this is also from the uh, um, Raven up there at the Audubon Society. Uh, you come by here and you look at the right angle and get that little diamond is implanted in the eye and it'll just sparkle as you walk by sometimes. Uh, it's kind of a hidden little little trick. I don't know if it'll work there, but anyway, it's here. You can see it. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a friend of mine who was posing, who agreed to pose. Uh, a young woman that I knew was in the choir that I belonged to and, and she was perfect for this. I wanted something where it was, had to do with nurturing. Again, protect, in a way, the raven is protecting this whole scene. But she's nurturing. I feel like she embodies a, a, a kind of nurturing ethic. You can see the water just coming. Is that coming? It's almost like you could say it's coming from her to the to the stream, but it's also coming from the stream to her and then back again. Um, but there's a doing the painting was a lot of fun in the sense that there's a, a coming home to it. Like these, the surrounding forms. This was from the Audubon Society. This was a friend of mine at the yeah, at, the, <laughs> at the church and the choir. This is. The, my backyard. This is the Willamette down behind where I live in Wilsonville. So, you know, bringing that together is a wonderful collage of, of forms. And uh, I'm so pleased to have it here with Robert's paintings. And it works, they, the two of them work together so well. Uh, Bob knew this was going to happen. He knew it was going to look good. I, <laughs> I didn't, I wasn't sure of it. <laughs> when you come in sometime, come and take a look at it when you can see both of them together and they're just magnificent. 
So maybe with that, I could turn over the uh, the show here and and have you talk to Great. The, to Bob, my dear friend. The two, by the way, the two of us have been together quite a long time, and I really enjoy the friendship we we've, we've had over the years. Thank you, Bob. Sounds like that. You know, be silent for fifteen minutes. <laughs> 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 uh, so let's see. Uh, actually, I've been painting on top of. Well, sometimes it's not garbage, but I think I started when I was a student. When other students didn't want their canvas anymore, I actually painted on top of their work. And also, in the, uh, the beginning of the term faculty, I would uh, give out some canvases to us to paint. So, so I'm used to actually painting on top of uh, objects in, in, in a way, uh, except that now I'm painting on top of uh, what I call garbage, uh, from my own garbage that you can't recycle. Or there might be a few things that maybe you can recycle now, but uh, when I started, there were so many things you couldn't recycle. So. But uh, mainly, I started painting this large painting. Rick True and I went to uh, Opal Creek area in 1990 when people were protesting about the uh, cutting of the old growth uh, trees. And so, a couple of you know dumb guys just go and start hiking through this creek. We spent all day uh, hiking and. Uh, well, we didn't really accomplish anything. We just kind of tried to hike out. By the time we came out, we were kind of exhausted. But it actually made us uh, think uh, differently, at least about our work. So Rick quit uh, making sculptures from old growth, uh, uh, well, uh, trees, because that's what he was doing before. And I uh, uh, was already recycling some things, mine on canvas or uh, apple trees that I cut from my mother's yard. So there were a lot of trees that were collaging into my painting before. But so I started doing this uh, larger painting uh, just to just to get rid of my garbage, really. And uh, I remember some people said there's too much garbage or too much stuff in your painting. But well, the reason is. If I paint large, I could get rid of my garbage. That's <laughs> part of it. And uh, I think the comment said the other day, one of the uh, art critics said, my kids could do it, or something like that. So he said, <laughs> he said, well, I started this painting and, well, I used, to, I used to paint large in my old studio, but I actually made another studio so I could paint larger. So this one uh, started in 19... I mean, 2007, and then I uh, painted off and on until I think the 2019, so it's 12 years uh, I worked on the painting. Um, but I think that I might even touch that up a little bit since. So, you know, if you're a kindergartner, you have to be a senior in high school by the time you finish the painting, so it's not <laughs> like you know, a kindergartner could paint the painting. So it's not, it's not that kind of a thing. Um, but maybe I want to talk a little bit about what painting is in relationship to what people see on the screen. And, and, I, uh, and nowadays people think the artwork is that, not this. And so I, I, I was just saying a few minutes ago, I would prefer five people come and see the painting so they would, in a way, painting talk back to you. So you have a conversation uh, with the painting we make. Uh, let's see. When I was a student, I didn't understand what, uh, why some other people are painting a certain way. And so I was curious because I didn't understand it. Uh, because of it, I went to see the actual paintings. I went to Prado, I went to Louvre, I went to the National Gallery, all these places to visit the paintings. 
So Penny have a conversation with you, not uh -huh. the other way around. Yeah. So Penny says, here you are. Glad to see you. So you could actually have a conversation with a Penny. Yeah. So, you know, my Penny... How to make a Penny? Penny actually kind of talk back to you. It's not like you're just looking at the work. So, well, partially because we put ourselves in the painting. Uh huh. You know, painting isn't something just you just illustrate and say it's done. It's not like that. The more we understand about the world, maybe more you could put in. So, yeah. I don't know. I'm getting emotional. So, yeah. Partially is I want to see uh, my friend uh, Michael Stafford's painting at the uh, Russo Lee Gallery for a while ago. And he died last Saturday. And I, uh, you know, there's a gap in the world when you lose a friend. Uh huh. So, anyway, it's like a hole that creates when your friend leaves. Uh, well, yeah. Anyway, and then also I want to say Bill Pilsner's work, which and uh, um, before I came, to, came here, and Paul was talking about Brandy's uh, still life. Well, I don't know if Barry's actually working on Brandy's ideas, but if you see the real work, you actually get the sense of what, what the, the drawing of the painting is because of the texture. There's, uh, it's not just an illustration of something, it's the hand of the artist, the, the top process that goes in to make a, a picture, they're all in there if you want to look. Uh, uh huh. Yeah. So, so tactile sense of what people put in. And if you don't look at the work, you don't get it. So, you know, I mean, uh, this painting has no garbage, uh, partially because, well, when I'm doing this, this series of paintings, Sometimes it's so difficult to paint on top of uh, yeah. the garbage I placed in there. So then I, there was often I actually painted the one without garbage because uh, to get a little bit of uh, pressure off of myself. So when you're painting, sometimes you're so lost in it, it's hard to figure out how to resolve the painting, but which is okay. But if you don't see the real painting, you won't even, well, Anyway, I mean, uh -huh. so... <laughs> and these, these are from your, <clears throat> your garden? Yeah, yeah. I, I painted the uh, ink plant from in my garden uh, this summer, so... But, uh... <laughs> I would say I dislike explaining my own work, so <laughs> I don't want to talk too much about it, because... Uh, Good enough. I, I would prefer you look at the painting and think for yourself, so... Uh, Great. Yeah. So, come, come into Blackfish. Tuesday through Saturday, 11 to 4, and see Bob Dozono's works in person, along with the works of Paul Missiles. And uh, if you're lucky, the artist will be here to converse with you about the works. Please come, and thanks for being here and tuning into this part of the show. <laughs> and thank you, Bob. And hey, thanks to you guys working work the technical, <laughs> our technical crew. <laughs> All right, thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Night, everyone.